All right, today we're going to talk about food webs. You'll notice on the screen it starts with a couple of definitions. So at this point you'll want to pause the video and get these definitions, then we'll come back and talk about them. All right, we're going to be talking about food webs and how uh, animals live within the same area and live off of each other and all those things. Food webs attempt to show all the feeding relationships in a community. The most important thing that I want to show you on this slide right here is the direction of arrows shows the direction of energy flow. This is very important. They love to ask questions about that. At the bottom of a food web, you're always going to see a plant. We're going to talk about plants here in just a second. And, uh, and it says there, the only things that can turn sunshine into food. So we're going to talk about plants, the arrows, and we're going to talk about sunshine here in our next slide. Energy diagrams. This has to do with the arrows that we were just talking about. At the end, at one end of a diagram are always plants. Plants are what are called autotrophs. Make their own food. Okay? You and I are heterotrophs. We live off things that make their own food. Now, as it says right here, plants, they are called producers. Within a food web, they're called producers. They produce their own food. They'll take sunlight using the process of photosynthesis to produce their own food. So if it weren't for the sun, all of the energy of the world would be non-existent. All of it begins with the sunshine that hits the surface of the earth. You'll also notice it says they pass 10% of the energy they absorb onto the animals that eat them. That will be important here in just a minute. But we eat our food. That's why we have to eat such a high quantity of food because we only get 10% from each thing that we eat. So we have to eat quite a bit in order to get the energy that we need. So sometimes you'll see the word autotrophs, heterotrophs, but typically in web, food webs, you'll see the word producers, and then you'll also see the word consumers. That leads us to our very next slide, the consumers. Here's some examples of consumers, and I know there's quite a bit written here, so I'm going to give you a second to jot this down. Now, when it comes to consumers, you have three orders of consumers. You have first order, second order, and third order consumers, and the pictures here will help you with them. The first order consumers only eat plants. They're the herbivores, like deer, rabbits. They only eat grasses and small plants. So they get their energy directly from the plants. The plants get their energy. Remember, they are producers. They get theirs from photosynthesis. They get it from sunlight. Second order consumers eat only animals, and they're called the carnivores. And so a lion, for example, will eat a wildebeest or something else that he will get his energy from. Okay, so they're meat eaters. Okay, so the energy is passed, for example, if this lion were going to eat this deer, plants pass their energy on to the deer, that's how he survives, and the energy that he got is what he will get by eating him. Third order consumers are animals that eat other animals. Okay. And so, and they're also carnivores. Now, I'm going to give you another word. We, as humans, are typically what is called omnivores. We are carnivores sometimes, and we are herbivores. We eat plants, and we do eat animals. We're omnivores, but we're third order. Okay, we typically eat, as in the hamburger in the picture, other animals. Now, what does a food web look like, and how is it actually used? Well, here's a good example of a food web. Now sometimes in a food web or a food chain that they give you, they'll give you pictures. Sometimes they'll just give you words. Let's look at one first that has pictures. Now at the bottom you will see that there are plants. You can see there's a koala bear and so a koala eats eucalyptus leaves. Okay, see the arrow going from here to here? What that means is this goes into his stomach. That's the easy way to remember what the arrows are doing. This would go into his stomach. This would go into his stomach. So the arrow points where the energy is going. That's why it points that way. So these plants, the producers, will then 
pass their energy on to the consumers. There's your first order consumers. And this would be your second order consumers at this level. And so you can see how the energy is passed on. So in this case, you have the grass, which is eaten by the grasshopper. So the energy passes here. Remember a while ago, it said 10% of the energy of this plant is passed on. So this grasshopper is going to have to eat a lot of grass in order to survive. And then this grasshopper can be eaten by this owl. But this owl is not going to be full with just one grasshopper. He's going to have to eat a lot. So only 10% is passed on to the next level. This is how a food web would look. Now here's, an ex here's another example of how a food web might be asked as a question. This was actually a question on one of the tax tests one year. And instead of pictures, there's a bunch of words. You have berries and grass and grain. There's your producers. And then you have your first order, second order, and then your third order consumers above that. And so you can see where the arrows point. This goes into this guy's stomach, but this guy can go into a whole lot of different other animals. And so uh, they'll give you a picture like this. And the question in this case says, wolves and hawks are on the same trophic level. Okay, Wolves and hawks are on the same level. And this question is basically, do you understand a food web? And it says, because they, because they both live on land, are both large mammals, both eat primarily consumers, or D, have similar hunting patterns? Well, the only answer that it could be because of the food web is answer C. They both eat primarily consumers. That's why they're in that third order at the very top. Producer, first level consumer, second level consumer with a fox and the snake, second level or second order consumer, or excuse me, third order consumer at the very top because they eat primarily consumers. Many times their questions will be looking at the picture and seeing what is happening and answering a very simple question. Here's one more example. This happened to be another example on the tax test. You'll look at the picture for a second. Since plants are on the bottom, phytoplankton must be a plant, zooplankton, and then smelt and lake trout. Can you see how it all fits together? Which of these groups of organisms would most likely have accumulated the largest concentration of a long-lasting chemical pollutant in their bodies? Well, remember that if this is the producer and these are the consumers, these guys have to eat a lot of these guys for energy. And so it just works up, but not much passes on. But you'll notice from the example phytoplankton, well, is, if there's something in the water, he's going to get some of it. Zooplankton would get it from the phytoplankton. The lake trout would get it from the phytoplankton through the zooplankton, but the gulls get it from multiple directions. That's why this one is the best answer. It will get the largest concentration because of where it's located within the food web or the food chain. So remember that the arrows point who's going into whose stomach. Plants and producers are always on the bottom level. They work up to your consumer groups going up. And if you just look at your diagram and read your question carefully, you should easily be able to figure out the food webs.